Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this right here and this right here. The objects that were recently reported on the moon and on Mars. And I figured because these are such unusual objects and they were actually detected around the same time, it was probably best to just combine the two into one video just to explain to you that these are not as unusual as some of the media sources made it out to be. So let's actually start right here on the moon. And this particular discovery is coming from the Chinese U-2-2 mission, the rover that's essentially on the far side of the moon, exploring the site we never got to explore before. And very recently, the Chinese scientists published this paper that essentially investigates the discovery that kind of surprised them as well. Two relatively small but somewhat perfectly shaped spheres that seem to resemble some kind of a translucent glass, with the other object visible in this image. The objects the Chinese scientists refer to as the translucent glass globules. And though to us it might actually look somewhat unusual and somewhat unique, even implying that maybe someone placed them there or maybe this is extraterrestrial intelligence, in reality this is extremely common on the surface of the moon for one simple reason. All of this is produced during various collisions, for the most part. And the surface of the moon is pretty much covered in various signs of collisions. With the actual marble, though maybe not looking exactly like this, still possessing relatively similar shape and relatively similar properties. And they generally form when there's just a lot of temperature around any kind of a silicate material, such as the surface of the moon itself. And so during a typical impact, you'll usually have a lot of different molten material flying away from the surface, with the impact generating a lot of heat and the explosion itself then causing a lot of material to fly into various areas. And some of this molten material, as it solidifies, creates these unusual spherules. We've actually discussed a very similar detection last year, and you can find the video about this either in the description or somewhere right there. And a lot of similar spherules have even been discovered during the Apollo missions, specifically the Apollo 16 mission, that collected and brought back a lot of different samples that had an extremely similar appearance and, of course, composition. The only difference being that they were much, much smaller. They were only a few millimeters in size or even smaller than that. With the ones that were discovered now being significantly larger, as you can see in this image right here. These are at least 15 to 25 millimeters across and are essentially the size of a typical marble. Although during the Apollo 16 mission, they did discover one that was even larger, approximately 4 centimeters across, but it didn't really have these textures and did not look the same. However, some spherules can also be produced during volcanism and during various types of volcanic eruptions. And this is of course something we can use to study ancient volcanic activity on the surface of the moon. Although at the moment it's not really certain what their true origin is just yet. They are more likely to be the impact spherules, not really the volcanic ones. So what's the difference though? Well, the main difference between what was discovered during the Apollo 16 mission and now is really in the texture itself. The ones that were discovered by the Chinese mission are a little bit more translucent or basically a little bit more transparent. They seem to be a little bit more shiny, but they also have some kind of a substance on the inside that produces an extremely specific texture, which actually suggests that these particular little marbles might have been created in a slightly different way. They might have been created twice. First, a very specific type of a volcanic glass known as a northosite was created from an ancient volcano that used to be here. And later on, all of this volcanic material, after it solidified, melted again during some kind of an impact from a relatively powerful asteroid that ended up remelting the material and producing the spherules we see. And these particular materials have a name and they've been known for a very long time. They're known as the anorthositic impact glasses. Quite a mouthful. But anyway, basically it just means the volcanic material that became reheated and remelted by an impact that happened in the area. And the only reason why they're not unusual for the moon and are somewhat unusual to find on Earth is because Earth has a lot of sediment, or a lot of sedimentation that is. These spherules, when they occur on Earth, they eventually get covered by a lot of other stuff and they slowly move down into the ground. And so if you were to dig through the sediment, you would actually find some of these spherules there as well. On the moon though, because there's no geologic activity, they stay on the surface for a very long time. In this case, potentially hundreds of millions of years. So, mystery number one solved. But let's talk about that other stuff. The slightly more mysterious, more plant looking thing. This thing. And this is on Mars. Discovered very recently from one of the images in the Curiosity rover. Not to be confused with the more recent Perseverance rover. And so NASA actually posted this not so long ago. 
but obviously no one is claiming that this is life. It was actually found in this image right here taken on Soul 767 that you can find in the description. But if not life, what is it? If this is not aliens, I don't know what it is, right? So okay, yes, it does look organic and it does look like life made it. Almost looks like some kind of a coral. But just like I mentioned before many times, morphology is not the same as actual life. If something looks like life, it does not necessarily mean that it is one. And this is exactly the case here. In reality, this is a type of a mineral formation we've seen on Mars many, many times. And it's formed through the precipitation of different types of minerals or salts from water. In some way, similar to salt, how salt precipitates from salt water. So basically, it's a type of a crystallization process. And naturally, this also has a scientific name. It's known as the diagenetic crystal cluster, with many other examples existing in various papers showing us various 3D formations that form as the crystal solidifies from the liquid water, and usually made as a combination of different types of minerals and different types of crystals. Although interestingly enough, this crystal seems to be very resistant, resistant to for example things like erosion. And one of the most famous examples of this process or this type of a crystal is something we've discussed in an older video where I talked about these so-called Martian blueberries and also a scientist that claimed that maybe these are potentially mushrooms, which they're not. These are, once again, crystals and they seem to be everywhere on Mars. And very recently, this wonderful person, whose Twitter link you can also find in the description below, created this beautiful 3D simulation kind of showing us what this probably looks like in three dimensions. So notice how it does actually have a slightly different, less familiar shape if you look at it from other sides. But basically, that's what we think it might look like, with the current name for this object being a Blackthorn Salt. So definitely pretty cool, very unusual looking, but in reality pretty common on Mars. And so for now that's basically the mystery of these unusual formations that kind of look like maybe alien life or someone dropped some marbles on the floor, but not. It's really not. These are just minerals that are absent on our planet because we have very different chemical reactions and we have a lot more erosion and sedimentation. That's basically the difference why it's not common on Earth. On that note, once we learn something else or find some other ones, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.